All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And um, yeah, I wanted to go into this brief lesson as I titled it A Rude Awakening. Okay, A Rude Awakening. And, um, you know, is, is exactly that. <laughs> That's exactly what I should say is uh, happening to the world. Okay. Um, you know, we we, uh, we talk about Babylon a lot because uh, Babylon is a main factor in in um, in biblical prophecy in terms of calamities and, you know, destruction to happen, you know, but really it's going to happen to the whole world. You know, the whole uh, planet, the whole planet is going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. OK, and um, the thing about it is the scriptures uh, mention uh, sudden destruction. You know, the scriptures talk about uh, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. You know, so the the when you look at the way, especially the American people are, they're very docile, you know, because they've been they've been conditioned uh, over time so much that they don't they don't really get up for anything. You know, they don't bother to look into anything unless it directly affects their life. And that is a very bad thing. See, they, they love, they're caught up in pleasures. They love pleasures. And it's much, it's much easier to sit at home and watch CNN and hear whatever it is they tell you to do and just do it than to, to uh, be a, a scholar or thoroughly do research and look into the different sites and look into the meaning of certain things. Like, whoa, well, well, what is, what is, what does it mean if this country does this? You know, or what does it mean if this happens here? How does that tie in to affect me on an individual level? So that's, that's, you know, they don't want to do that. There's too much work because there's certain articles that you read that you need to, you need to pause every few seconds and go look up. What is this term that they're using? What, what do they mean by this? You know, what, what, what happened during this time period that they're making reference to, you know, and people don't want to do that. They simply just don't want to do that. They can, they, in their mind, they can spend their time doing something, uh, uh, something else with their life than to, to, to go and look into how current events affect them or will affect them. So because of that, they're having, and they're going to have a painful rude awakening. And in, in actuality, it's going to be things that have been happening because the world is starting to feel the effects of actions that have been taken years ago. And these effects have been happening. However, now they're, they're, they're getting more and more painful. But to some people, it feels like it's, it's just happening out of nowhere because they weren't paying attention. So to them, it's very sudden. And the Lord did say that he's going to bring sudden destruction. The thing about it is, this is only the beginning of sorrows. And the beginning of something is, is much less intense than the end of it. You know, you like if you if you watching a movie, for an example, the movie starts off slow. You know, you have to you have to introduce the characters, right? The who's the you have to build up the the antagonist. You got to show the protagonist a bit. You know, you you got to you got to build up the story, and and then slowly build it up to the climax. So, right now we're in the beginning, but now here's the thing: if you if you watch a movie and it already starts off, the, the, the intro of the movie is already semi, you know, pretty intense, then that, that shows you that this is going to be a high level uh, movie, meaning it's going to be an action packed, intense filled movie. And that's what this life of this time of Jacob's trouble is like, It's like a, a, a action packed, intense filled movie. All right. <laughs> I thought I saw MOTB, a license place at MTB, you know, which is pretty close, but um, that shows you that the time we're coming in, all right, is, is going to be a very intense time. And it's going to be very hard on people because they're going to be going through pain, but that's when they're going to be learning what, what, what is actually going on. But they're going to learn that the hard way through going through it. You know, when they, when they, when they go to the store and prices are like very, very crazy, where is, oh, 144, there we go. All right, but when they go to the store and prices are, are through the roof and 
they they can't they actually cannot buy anything then they're gonna look into things like okay like what's going on why are prices so high oh inflation what's inflation you know and then they're gonna look oh this and this and then they're gonna but but by that time you're already going through it because when you look up okay well what's inflation and then you you're gonna look up well okay well how do you it's like looking up a diagnosis of yourself right a di information to diagnose yourself what do you also look up you look up okay well now that i'm diagnosed what, what's the solution what do i do so when they start finding out okay this means this this means that they're going to start looking for ways where they can um they can uh better their situation the only thing about that is in the times we're coming into the only way to really better your situation is by being proactive being reactive in jacob's trouble won't really help you as much because that's why the scriptures say seek ye the lord while he may be found that's proactive when the evils day, when the evil days come not right that's um ecclesiastes the 12th chapter that is proactive meaning that when the time comes uh it also says i believe in the book of proverbs they shall seek me early but they shall not find me so when the time comes that people are seeking the lord when all hell breaks loose right in their affliction they shall seek me early when the, the time of affliction happens when jacob's trouble fully kicks off that's when people are going to be seeking the lord but that's reactive they're going to do that as a reaction to the hell they're going to be catching uh in jacob's trouble but the lord doesn't want to deal that way he wants you to deal proactively he wants you to seek him now before jacob's trouble fully intensifies or, or fully pops off so that you can be good in that time there's a saying prevention is better than cure but in some situations prevention is the cure because if if, it's, if whatever it is is not prevented there is nothing you can do after that all right for example the motb prevention is the cure the only cure for the motb is not taking it that's prevention after you take it there's nothing else you can do all right and that's what it that's what it's like in jacob's trouble that's why the scriptures tell you put not over the lord from day to day you know and seek him while he may be found and 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 that he may run that readeth you have to make haste to to to, to um make things right with the lord because time is very very short as they say time is of the essence so um this is the book of isaiah chapter 31 i want to start here because a part of the reason uh people are so docile is because they trust in esau because esau has cunning words right the scriptures say that his words were smoother than butter yet were they drawn swords and yet was war in his heart so Esau knows how what to tell you and how to say it to calm you down or to, to rouse you up. And, and uh, in Genesis 49, it talks about Judah uh, uh, being crouched down. Who shall who shall rouse him up? Because because of the influence that Esau has put out there, it is it has put a lot of people to sleep when they really should be alert. They're they're in a calm sleep like mentality because they trust that their government or that Esau is going to take care of it all. Not knowing that he's setting he's setting them up for destruction. Not knowing that their 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 worst enemy is the one they they're closest to. Okay? And then all these events are setting up like leading into other other bigger events. You know, like a big problem is a small problem that gets out of hand. Well, bigger prophecies come from smaller prophecies that lead up to it. Okay. Um, so uh, Jer uh, Salakia, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. It says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. And and woe meaning destruction, right? To them that go down to Egypt for help. Now, um this 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 applied to Jake back then, but it also applies more so now because the modern day Egypt that is talking about is America. Okay, America in in uh in the Bible in terms of prophecy is known as it know is known by different names or empires that have been before okay sometimes it is known as or referred to as assyria or nineveh or babylon or egypt or sodom okay so in um let's prove this in the book of uh, I, uh revelation chapter 11 verse um eight it says and their cities Slakia and their bodies, whose bodies? The bodies of the Israelites, but it's not talking about their like like uh literally. All right. It says, and their bodies 
shall lie in the street of the great city. Keep that part in mind, the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So we know that this, this uh, Revelation 11 and 8 is, a, is put in a parabolic way. It's not literal because the dead bodies don't represent physical dead bodies laying down in the streets of America, but it's, all, it's, it's referring to Israelites in a dead state, meaning Israelites without knowledge of who they are, without knowledge of who their power is, without knowledge of what's going on, their heritage. And for a period of time, that was us. We were walking around just like that, which is described in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. So it mentions in the, in the, in the great city. So how do we link the great city to Babylon to know that that great city, which is known as Egypt, is also referring to Babylon. Okay, let's let's jump real quick to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 17. And in the book of Revelation, the 17th chapter, um, I'm going to start, I'm going to read the first few verses and then jump down. So this is Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. It says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So the whore is who? Babylon, a.k.a. America. It says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the kings of the earth are these, these uh, the rulers or the, of these other nations. It says, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Going into the, her, the American ideologies and ways which they adopted by by having having dealings with America. They call it Americanization or Westernization. Um, verse three says, so he carried me away uh, in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So the woman was is America sitting upon the beast, which is NATO and the EU. OK, because that represents America is a part of it, but it's really like the head. Okay. It says, um, let's see, verse four. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, which that's royal. It represents royalty because that, that purple and scarlet and scarlet goes back to, uh, they call it a, a Ty Tyrian, Tyrian purple. And a Tyrian purple was a, a, a purplish reddish dye that came from, um, uh, what do they call them? Uh, Mu Munich's. I think that's what they're called. They're they're sort of um, sea sea snails. All right, that that are really around the area of Tyree, and you would get that that uh, purplish reddish dye by by basically they would those um, sea snails will produce it when you smash their shells. So you had to take like a whole like you needed thousands of them just to get a little bit amount of that dye. So that made that dye very rare and expensive. And it was only really produced over there because there was a certain way they would do it, but it was native to the Tyrians. And so um, whenever it would mention scarlet or purple, that that is pretty much what it's referring to. And that's why it was associated with royalty or nobility, because since it was so highly priced, only those that were rich were able to afford it and wear it. Okay. So, and, and then like Daniel, the fifth chapter, you notice when Belshazzar asked Daniel, or he says, whoever can explain to me the writing on the wall, he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. And he shall be clothed with uh, a gold chain about his neck and a scarlet, which goes back to that Tyrian purple. Okay. So, um, so it says here, so John has seen this woman and she's looking, she's looking nice, you know, has this like, like almost like royal apparel on. It says, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. All right. And, and right now that's that's being revealed, the filthiness and abominations of this place. So this place isn't looking so good anymore. Now it says, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Yahweh Shem Yahshai Barakatham to all you tuning in. Um verse five is the key part it says and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth so now we know that the woman is babylon okay so how do we link that back to revelation 11 about the great city 
Well, when you jump down in the 17th chapter, when you jump down to the 18th verse, which is the last verse, it says, and the woman which thou sawest, dealing with the with Babylon, which we just read about, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. You see? So the woman, aka Babylon, is that great city. So when you go back to Revelation 11 and 8, it said that the, the bodies of the, the dead bodies shall lie in the street of what? The great city, which is Babylon. But that great city is also referred to spiritually as Sodom and Egypt. So that's how we know that you, America can also be referred to as Egypt or as Babylon or as Sodom or as Assyria or as these ancient names. So when you go and read uh, uh, Isaiah, the 19th chapter, which in word it mentions Egypt. But if you don't understand this, how this is actually referring to Babylon or America, you know, you'll get messed up. And that's why these scholars have such a hard time. We're not, no, no, I'm, I'm not even going to say they have a hard time understanding prophecy. They don't get prophecy. You know, they, they go into the history, but they get stuck on there because they can't see. That's why I said spiritually, spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So those that are spiritually discerned can actually identify that and understand and break down prophecy. All right. So with that being said, um, going back to Isaiah chapter 31, verse one. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots. So now we know it's, it's really referring to um, Babylon. And that's our people. They depend so much on Esau that, that every, every time something goes wrong, they depend on him to tell them what's happening, to give them their information, and also to deliver them from it. But here the Lord said, woe unto you. It says... Um, and trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. And, and that's these people now. You see, with this whole situation going on with um, Russia and Ukraine, you have a lot of people that are in the mindset that, oh, um, if anything, and if war, if war popped off, the U.S. is going to do this, the U.S. is going to do that. Now, of course, the U.S. has a mighty arsenal, but the way prophecy is set up, Russia is going, Russia is going, is going to annihilate them. Not just Russia, but Russia is also going to play a big part in that. Okay? So a lot of people like to comfort themselves by thinking since the U.S. has this large army and, and, and great arsenal, that because of that, oh, gas prices set to soar on Thursday. Hmm, that's, that's nice. <laughs> Shit. I mean, hey, as all this is happening, we also got to, you know, take heed to ourselves because we live here. You know, we also own vehicles. You know, we also so... These are all things you got to keep in mind, you know, we, we, we're going to be delivered out of Jacob's trouble, but we still going to be in on here while it's going down, you know, but the Lord is going to deliver us out of it. So things are going to get uncomfortable, but to the world is going to be unbearable, but we're going to be able to bear it. But yet, but we're also going to be put out of our comfort zones. So we also have to, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Oh, you know, yeah, we, we report on these things and the Lord will feed us and he will protect us and he will take care of us. But think about it like this. If if, you know, if, for example, gas prices go up everywhere. I mean, you we, we all still buy gas, too. Right. So, you know, we'll still we'll still be here while these things are happening, you know. But, hey, the Lord will always make a way and set it up to where his elect are going to be good. Um, But as it says here, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. See, they, they're so quick to, to verify with Esau, to verify with the media, to verify with what this guy said and this guy said, but they don't want to trust in the Lord. If, 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 if there was an announcement that um, maybe there was an EMP attack about to hit or like, you know, I don't know, there was like nuclear missiles about to hit or something like that, right? And... The, the government says everybody run to a fallout shelter or everybody go buy flashlight and candles or whatnot. But then we tell you that, no, the most High said, just sit, just sit in your house. Just don't leave your house that day. People would rather go and run and buy flashlight and candles than to sit in their house and not do anything because they would rather follow what Egypt says than what the Lord says. And in essence, that's what they're doing now when we're telling them, look, repent 
and seek the Lord, have faith in the names of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and just do the Lord's will and you'll be taken care of. They, if you tell them that to them, they're like, bro, you're tripping. You mean to tell me famines are coming? They, they're about to do some crazy ass attack and I'm just supposed to sit here and call on some names and I'm going to automatically be fine like magic? I don't believe that. I'd rather physically go and buy this and buy this and do this and do all this because that's what seems more likely to help me. That's And that's that's people speaking from a carnal mind. And because of that, see, um, the Lord in the, in the, I think in the book of Matthew, I forgot, I think it was in, in um, Nazareth or one of those areas where it says the Lord didn't perform many miracles because they didn't believe. Their faith was so little. It says it says that the Lord did not perform many. Therefore, the Lord didn't perform many miracles in that city because they didn't they didn't have faith. They didn't believe. So because of of these people's lack of faith, the miracles that would happen to deliver them won't happen for them because they lack faith. You know, these miracles are going to happen uh, to the faithful and for the faithful because they are provoking it. But but if you don't have faith, how can you expect like the Lord said, to move that mountain. How? If you, you need the faith, you got to provoke it. You got to provoke the miracles. But if you don't, if you're not putting the cause and the ingredients, then you're not going to get the effect. But we are doing our best to put that cause, you know, and, and, and looking at all these things and knowing, yeah, this shit is real, but we got to, we got to be about what we say. You know, if you, if you, if you're telling somebody, look, you, you, you got to have faith, then you yourself got to have faith. You know, if you're telling somebody, look, when the time comes, you just got to like, you know, you got to, you, whatever it is, you got to have faith in the Lord and go on it. Then you got to be able to do the same thing, you know, because there, a lot of things are easier said than done. But in this time, we, we're not going to have an option whether we want to have faith or not. Your life is going to, the scriptures say the just shall live by faith. So your life is going to be dependent on whether you have faith in the Lord or not. So it doesn't matter how bad and scary it gets and how, how nervous you get in the flesh. We're not going to have an option when it comes to having faith. You you have to have faith or else you, you, you're not going to make it, you know, and it's going to be scary because uh, uh, having to exhibit that faith is going to put you in some life threatening situations. You know, it's going to put you in positions where you're going to feel like you're asked out. You're going to feel like, damn, did I just um, did I just jeopardize my life uh, because of faith? But what what man of the Lord, what for the most part, didn't jeopardize their life because of faith? You know, damn, uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they jeopardized their life because of faith. And in turn, what did that do? That provoked miracles to where they were thrown into the midst of a fiery furnace and didn't even have the smell of fire on them. So. You know, you, you got to put in to get out. You know, you, you you can't expect these all these great things to happen if you're not willing to do great things in terms of uh, faith. You know, you got the, what you what you what you input to the Lord. That's the output you get back. So it says um, back in uh, Isaiah 31 and one continuing, it says, but 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 they look not onto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words. So that's why when these prophecies start popping off on a major scale, they're not going to slow down or stop or go in reverse because the Lord is not going to call back his words. That's right. Shalom. Stay in the spirit 144. Ecclesiasticus 2 and 7. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and do not go aside lest ye fall. And that's and that's the key right there. You have to, you have to wait. That's the, see, that's the jeopardizing part. Imagine, imagine you, you find yourself in the middle of a street and the Lord says, stand there and wait. And there's a freaking truck coming, coming straight towards you full speed. And the Lord says, wait. And you're standing there, you're seeing the truck coming full speed and everybody's like, yo, move, move. What's wrong with you? You're trying to die. What's wrong? And everybody else is jumping out the way. But the Lord said, you, like you're hearing the Lord tell you, wait, you're standing there like, Lord, <laughs> you know, you may see the truck coming from half a mile away and you may be able to stand there and say, okay, Lord said, wait, I'm gonna wait. But as the truck gets closer, 
you start questioning because you're like, okay, Lord, it's getting kind of close now. You know what I'm saying? You're saying I'm going to wait, but boy, you want me to die? Like, oh, Lord, whoa, whoa. You know, and then the truck, the truck driver's honking, like, yo, the, the brakes don't work. Move, move. The beep, beep. Everybody's like, yo, what's wrong with this guy? And the Lord says, wait. And the truck, now, now the truck ain't even half a mile away. Now the truck is like one car distance away from you. The Lord says, wait. That portion where the truck is maybe one foot or three feet away from you, that is the moment of decision. Because when the truck is half a mile away from you, you exhibit faith to stand there, but your faith is not really being tested. You know why? Because you still have enough time to book out, book it out of the way if you wanted to. So the Lord is like, yeah, you may stand there, but that's because if you wanted to, you could jump out the way. Are you going to stay there when it comes to a point where you don't have any other options? Because when the truck is about three feet away from you, you don't have any other options. You can't, you can't jump out the way in time. So now you, you, you're stuck. You, you're stuck in that position based on the faith you had because the Lord told you to wait and you're standing there waiting. And the key to that situation is to have it in your mind that, you know what? I'm going to wait even if it kills me. Because in that, in that case, your mind is, well, you know what? I'm going to wait because the Lord told me to wait. And if waiting means that this truck is going to run me over, then so be it. And once you make peace with that in your mind, guess what? You, even if the truck is like, like two inches away from you, you've already made peace that, you know what? If waiting means that I'm going to die, whatever. And then before you know it, you stand there and the Lord just, just has you like phase through the truck. Boom, it just goes right right through and you stand in there and you, you see, oh, shit, what the, f you know, and the Lord is like, I told you to wait, you see, because people are expecting, you probably thinking, okay, wait, but maybe the Lord will like move me out the way or have an angel swoop down and, and, and catch me or have me, but the Lord got other plans, you know, so you remember, even though we might not see a possibility in a certain situation, the Lord sees all possibilities because he's the author of everything that goes on and we don't know more than the lord does so if the lord says wait you you don't know more than the lord so if he says wait you don't got an option you gotta wait you know and that's and, and i'm saying all that to say that as as we go through hard times and we hazard our lives for our faith and for we for what we believe in we have to wait upon the lord's mercy as the, the elder put this, the precept in, in the comment section we have to wait upon the Lord's mercy, meaning the things that we've been assured of, that we know that the Lord said this, that's what we have to stick to. And that's that's where we bury our faith in. Because like I said, when the truck is three feet away from you, that is when your, your faith, that is when the Lord is like, yeah, this individual truly has faith because they didn't even move, you know, because, you know, sometimes your body moves by itself out of fear. But you, you you overcame that fear with your faith. That is true faith. And in doing that, the Lord will deliver you. You know, the Lord the Lord always got us, man. But he, he throws these tests, you know, here and there to, uh, to test us. And we got to be ready for that. All right. Um, yep, this is uh, Courtney Everett, Jeremiah 17 and 5. Thus, if the Lord cursed be the man that trusteth in man. And maketh flesh departed from the Lord. Charger in, but it's like God, uh, charge, 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 whatever. So um, let me see. Let me read like one, a couple more on here. This is uh, yep, stay in the spirit. One forty four, Psalm thirty four and nineteen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. D you hear that? But and that's how the Lord has his rep. You know, that's how he has his his reputation. Khan, the faith of Abraham. You know, these are things, there's a reason the Lord had these things written. And there's a reason why we have to read these scriptures and believe the things we're reading. Because when all hell breaks loose, you're going to need to call back to mind all of these things and get strength from that. The same way as you're reading it, you you know, certain precepts you read, you get hyped in the spirit. You know, like, yo, like, damn, man, like that's, that's, you know. Well, in that time, we're going to need that, that strength. We're going to need to draw that strength from the things we know that the Lord has promised us and said according to the scriptures. All right. And it's the spirit because, you know, I had this lesson 
going to go in another direction because I had different precepts based on that. But, you know, based on how the spirit is moving, what I'm going to do is, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how much of these I could get through. Hopefully before my battery decides to, to dip out. But um, so continuing back in Isaiah chapter 31, it says here, uh, verse two, yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. And always remember Proverbs 18 and 10. The, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. So we, we have somewhere to run into. And, and the, the, the beautiful thing is it's easily accessible, meaning from anywhere, anyhow, whatever situation you're in, you can always call upon the Lord. You know, and calling upon the Lord is much faster and more eff efficient than 911. 911, you need a phone. If you don't got a phone or you don't got signal, there ain't no 911. <laughs> you know, you call for help, you screaming and screaming, but what if somebody is around, but then they decide not to help you? You know, just because you scream for help doesn't mean that somebody is going to help you. <laughs> right. And, and, and that's the thing that that's going to be a part of the painful realization for people is that they think that all they got to do is call for help. Right. Oh, I, I never need nobody's help. But then the one time I do, if I call, they're going to come. No, they, look, just because you call for help does not mean that people have to help you. So in the time when all hell is breaking loose, that's going to happen a lot. People are going to be screaming for help, but no help is going to come. It says here, uh, verse three, now the Egyptians are men and not God and their horses flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is hoping shall fall down and they shall all fail together. See, so the help, the help cometh from the Lord. And a lot of these people don't put their trust in the Lord. So both your helper and you are going to get got. Um, because all these judgments are going to be from the Lord specifically targeted to people. Isaiah chapter 30, verse um, seven, it says, for the Egyptians shall help in vain. And because whenever anything happens, oh, we got food pantries. Oh, we got this. Oh, we're trying to do this to, to limit the pain on the American people. That's what they always say, right? That's, that's not, you ain't going to be able to do nothing with that. That's why it says they shall not regard their kings nor princes because they're going to say you guys are full of shit. Your words are not, my mans, they're going, they're going, they might just grab Saki off the freaking podium because they're going to say, look, you, you just speak in air because guess what? When I go to the gas station, I can't even get no gas no more, <laughs> you know, or, or when I go to the store, I can't, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't get food. So why the hell should I listen to what you're telling me? Are you putting food on the shelves? If you're not, then shut the F up. <laughs> and that's the energy people are going to be in. They're going to say, look, don't talk to me unless you got food, you know, or unless you got something that I'm interested in hearing. And soon they're going to say, well, they're going to say, well, if you don't, then I'm going, I'm going to do what, what I got to do to get what I need. And that's the energy people are in. They're going to be in that because of what? Desperation. Um, so like I'm reading here in Jeremiah 30 and 7, for the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore, have I cried concerning this, their strength is to, st to sit still. And that's what this guy, um, uh, what's this guy's name? Zelensky. That's a spirit. They just put an announcement on him. That's what he's going through. That's what he's realizing. These niggas, he's like, <laughs> he's like, look, you, if y'all, if y'all leave my ass to get got, you realize that they're coming for you next. That's what, that's what he's telling them. He said, look, y'all done said all of this. Where you at? Where you at? You throwing sanctions. You know, you know what's you know what's really going on with those sanctions? The, the, reason, the reason they're hyping up and throwing those sanctions is because it's come it's benefiting their agenda to further drive things up and make things more chaotic to kill the economy. That's to help their agenda, not because they care so much about Ukraine and the other people there and this. Hold on a second. You devils were were so bloodthirsty that you don't drop bombs on other people did you forget that moab afghanistan uh hiroshima and nagasaki did you forget that you did that did you forget that there were men women and children over there that suffered those effects so if you were cold-hearted enough to do that but all of a sudden you care so much about people in ukraine that are being killed and bombed because you have such a good heart because you didn't kill and bomb people so you can get out of here with that because we don't believe that 
they they're doing that because it it benefits them. It when they come to a position where they can pose as the benef the the helpers, you know, and and the, the 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 ones that that make things better and oh put us in a good light. Oh, all of a sudden that's all good. But when you gun us down in the streets all the time, wh where's the humanitarianism in that? I believe Russia was the one who made a comment on that. They said, "Look, yeah, you guys shoot your people down in the street." And and so what you got to say about others outside? You know, what about your domestic problems? You're not worried about the crime rates going on, people walking around smearing bags of human feces on others, you know, and then being let out. Uh, attacking people with axes and shit, but you worried about you worried about Ukrainians that are going through shit. And <laughs> man, see that's the thing about these these people here, man. They think they're so well off that they got they got they got the time and the energy and the resources to go help others. Right? But they ain't going when 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 somebody slaps the hell out of you right in front of a police officer and he looks at you and he does a little smirk and laughs and he looks back on his phone and he walks away, that's when you going you going to realize, "Yo, look, look, look. Look, look I feel bad for y'all over there in Ukraine, but my man, we need to do something here." You know, something needs to be done here because I just got the shit slapped out of me right in front of a cop. And he just he just laughed and walked away, you know, because this place is just going to hell. All right. The the flames are being fanned and it's getting hotter and hotter. Oh, it's getting real hot. You know, it's getting real hot. And the Lord is the Lord is the author of it all, because now is the time for pain and suffering. Now is the time for the rude awakening of these docile idiots. You know, and every time we say it, they, they make it seem like, oh, you guys are just haters. Oh, you, you guys are just uh, whoremongers. Sorry, not whoremongers, fear mongers. You know, you guys are just this. You guys are just, okay, you're going you're gonna to find out, you know, you're going to find out why we've been saying the things we've been saying. Because the, the, the power that commanded us to come and speak is going to do exactly that. We're like, um, we're like Silver Surfer, you know, before, before, um, Galactic. This comes and, and eats the different worlds. We're like Silver Surfer. We come and we prepare and warn these people. Damn, where is this precept at? Salaki, I'm trying to find a particular precept here. Pretty sure. Oh boy. You know, but but that's and that's what's going on. And when it happens, man, see, now now is the time when we going we gonna start seeing that Micah 7 and 10. All right, then she that is my enemy shall see it, which I got that here on deck too, you know. And and, and as these things get dire and, and worse, you're gonna start seeing um, Isaiah four and one, you know, it, because the Lord's prophecies they manifest, meaning they 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 develop, they progress, they turn into what it is. So one situation unfolds, and as it's unfolding, it it, it turns into what it is that you read about. Then you can say, oh, okay, okay, okay. I, that That's Isaiah 4, like that is the manifestation of Isaiah 4 and 1 because this happened and these chain of events set off this and they made things so bad that this is the end result. Remember, the prophecies are the end result. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. So we have to measure the times diligently to see, okay, what are the things happening that are transforming or bringing about the end result, which we read about in the scriptures. So you watch, oh, things are getting hard. You know, this is happening. This is going up. This is going up. Now you start to see women start gravitating more towards men, you know, and then it gets so bad that it just fully, it fully manifests. And then all you can think about is Isaiah 4 and 1, because that's what you see happening. See, so these hard times, they're going to lead into that. And, and it's going to be, it's going to be seamless. These prophecies, they're going to, they're going to fulfill themselves so smoothly. You know, you go, and it's going to be fast, but it's going to be smooth. You know, you you ain't going to need to second guess. Oh, is this the manifestation of this or is this the man? No, no, no. It'll be it'll be so loud. It'll be so loud in your head that you'll know. Yeah, that like there's no doubt about it. This is the the fulfillment of such and such. And it's not going to be like a one day thing. Oh, you wake up on a Tuesday and boom, this is the fulfillment of Isaiah 4 and 1. Wednesday, boom, this is the, film, the fulfillment of Isaiah, uh, Micah 7 and 10. No, it's going to be over a period of time. And so you're going to know we're in the time. That's why we say we're in the time of 2nd Ezra 15. You know, we're in because the prophecy is, is is taking place. It's 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 fulfilling, you know.
Khan, lo, it will come. Exactly. You know, exactly. So the, the prophecies are not just like, all right, boom, it just hit. Then, then that's it. No, it, 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 it gets, it starts and then it, it, it have it's happening and then it happened. You know, <laughs> it's, it's starting to happen. It's happening. And then it happened. All right. So you see, oh, they're starting. Oh, this is starting to happen. Oh, this, this can lead to Isaiah, this or Jeremiah, this or revelation, this. And then when, when we get there, you'll know, okay, we are now currently living in the fulfillment of yada, yada, yada. And then we'll be at the end of that yada, 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 which will be the beginning of the next yada, yada, yada. You see? Um, so the let me see. Where 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 you at? 726. All right. So lucky. I was trying to find this precept. It was giving me a little hard time. These pages over here, you know. Um Okay. I got you now. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 17. It says, And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men, meaning they're not gonna have a sense of direction, what to do, where to go how to reason properly people gonna be sounding like a, a bunch of idiotic kids with the things they're gonna be saying out their mouth you what you know well maybe you know maybe we should just give them sally and then they'll give us food you know sit there like nigga what, what's wrong with you you know the, the type of shit and ideas they're gonna be coming where you're gonna be you know what I mean? are, are you thinking are you using your brain and that's why a man of the lord is gonna be so valuable because we're gonna be directed by the spirit of the lord so we're gonna make sound quick on point decisions and 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 those decisions are gonna be to the benefit of ourselves and those that are around us and it's gonna be like every single time we're, we're always gonna know what to do how to do it when to do it because the lord is gonna be guiding us and directing us all right go here today don't do this do this and he's done it before the spirit is gonna lead us to places and it's gonna be always in our benefit even if people doubt they're gonna see okay we followed him and boom, we there, here's where we got. Something happened, he said, let's do this. We did it, and then boom, here's where we got. So they're going to see the power of the Lord dealing with uh, uh, his elect, you know, dealing with the men of the Lord. Uh, Second Ezra 16, then shall, they, sh then shall they be known who are my chosen because you're going to see how the Lord deals with certain people and it's going to be evident that, yeah, these are, that there's a higher power working with these individuals, okay? Um so I read this here, uh, Zephaniah. Oh, let me finish. It says, because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dung. And that's what's going to happen ultimately because it's go they're going to be finished off by those missiles, you know, and they're going to be they're going to be completely obliterated. But you're going to have a lot of dead bodies, which is going to leave a lot of stench and contamination and more diseases. And it's gonna it's gonna be like nonstop, one thing after another, after another, after another, and and people are gonna look. You go a lot of people going. There, there was that video, the video that uh, the elder brother Manat Zakba did, where the dude was saying the the Most High is really the devil. A lot of people go. They're gonna start actually thinking, damn, the Mo, is the Most High really the devil though? Because like the, the things going on on the earth are so brutal and cruel and painful. It's like. And you saying who? Yeah, how about is he? Is he like? Is he good? Like, is he a good guy? Cause like, you can look at the shit. You know, people are gonna be terrified, and they're gonna be wondering in their heads, is is this the works of the Most High or the devil? Because it's so brutal. But it's gonna be the Most High's anger. Anybody, when you see them real angry, you may think, yo, if you've never, if you don't know an individual, and you see them angry, and you see them appeasing their wrath by like probably like I don't know being somebody up or something. You're going to think, damn, this guy is like wicked or evil or something like that, you know? But imagine the Lord doing that. See, it ain't, it ain't, nobody's going to be trying to laugh in that time. Well, with the exception of uh, Isaiah 65, the Lord's servants. But the rest of these people, man, you ain't, yeah, Allah shot you. You know, they, that, that's, that's how the world is going to, when the Lord says, allow me to reintroduce myself. The, the first introduction they're going to know the Lord as is Allah Shadia. You know why? Because the the first the first feeling they're going to get associated with the Lord when he makes his name refreshed is going to be fear. Because that's the beginning. You first have to fear the Lord. So the Lord ain't going to introduce himself to the world again as, oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, it's me. Yeah, I'm, I'm. No, no, no. It's going to be Allah Shadia. And it's going to give that terror 
Just like in Egypt. How did the Lord's name become magnified in Egypt? Through terror. That's how a lot of people heard and feared. Right? So that's when the Lord reintroduces himself, it's going to be first by terror. You know? That's how they're going to record. That's how they're going to know the power of Israel. By terror. Um, Boom. Micah chapter 7, verse 10. It says, Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her, now shall she be trodden, trodden down as the mire of the street. So a lot of people think we just go around hating women. No, a lot of them make, make enemies of, of us just because of the things we say out of the scriptures. And really, if you 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 hate us, or you think you're our enemy, you're really coming against the Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And when you get stomped out and getting your face kicked in and your nose broken and your teeth kicked out and your jaw dislocated, you know, and you're getting used and abused and forced on a merry-go-round carousel, you know, and you going around. They, they, Mary ain't going around. You go, <laughs> you're going to be going around, you know, till you dizzy and hurt. <laughs> you know, so so they're going to they, it's going to be a hard, it's going it's not going to be fun. You know, it's going to be like 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 Disney World, but the dark edition, you know, because, you know, uh, I think I, I forgot where I saw it, but they were saying a lot of these Disney tales are really they really come from like dark, sinister, like uh, uh, like tales that they just, you know, revamped and made it seem like it was for children. But it was really like some dark shit, you know, but that's what's going to happen to a lot of these people when they see it. Shame is going to cover them. You know why? Because imagine a chick you, you might have dealt with and you told her this truth and she she just like she just she just did you dirty. Now. When she sees the things you've been saying come to pass and she's afraid and it's affecting her and she knows that her only way out is through you, how do you think she's going to feel? Knowing that, damn, time out, I got I to gotta go back to him? And she's remembering all the shit, the things she said to you. Oh, you were, you were pedophile. You were rapist. You were this. You were, you ain't shit. You know, you, you dress like a bum. You're wasting your life. You, you yada yada. And she's going to recall that she said all those things to you you know i never want to be with you i'm glad we ain't oh whatever whatever happened i'm just making things up but whatever she's gonna remember all of that and then she's gonna be like how am i like she's gonna feel bad but she's gonna be like i railed on this guy and he was just trying to warn me of this thing these things that are happening that are affecting me now and and now i see he wasn't doing it out of malice or hate but i hated him I repaid him evil when he was trying to do good for me. So, and I made an enemy out of one that was trying to be a friend. How do I possibly even try to reconcile with this person? Like, like, why would he even want to hear what I got to say if he even sees me? You see all that? That's then, then that pain, the regret, the tears, they're crying. So if she does find you, she might, before she even gets to you, she just might start bawling because she's just like, she, she's like in such mental distress of everything happening to her. But then it's even worse because she doesn't even know how to approach you. And she knows that chances are she's going to get rejected. And that's a possibility she doesn't want to think about. You know, so it's going to be real. Then shame is going to cover her. You know, shame is going to cover her. Shalom, shalom. Aharon, Amath, Ba, shalom. Khan, they're going to they get beat up like... <laughs> Yeah, God, God, have some we'll say. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah, if if you just type in have some Wilson on YouTube, you're gonna see it. You know, this dude uh, he, he's drinking on a train and shit. He got this mannequin and he just, you know, he, <laughs> Yeah, man. They go they go they go they're gonna be Wilson in that day. Oh, and they gonna have some. Oh, they're gonna have a lot. You know? Yeah, they go they gonna have some. Yep, Standard Spirit 144. Thy, thy, yep, they're going to be, thy, Psalms 110 and 3, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Look, that's how, that's how anything works. Somebody that, you know, there might be this kid who's always like, um, you know, always like, uh, like a nerd. Nobody really want to mess with him and yada, 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 right? They don't, they don't want to, oh, this guy's a nerd. What does he know? But then they come to find out that he's the son of a billionaire or the son of a trillionaire. And then all of a sudden, everybody want to be his friend because they found out the power he had or the riches he had. So 
it works like that. That's how people work. That's like the whole concept of gold digging. She don't want to talk to you. She don't want none of that. The second she sees what you got, she sees you different. You know? Yeah, I said have some. <laughs> you know? She's going to see you different. And she's going to she's gonna want to, you know, come. she's going to want to come back, but there ain't going to be no, no room for you. Sorry, mama. You ain't, ain't no room over here. You know? Shit. And they're going to they gonna fight and claw tooth and nail. And I'm telling you, uh, ha you a man having more than one woman is going it's not going that's not even going to be on a list of problems that they're worried about okay when because when you put it in perspective and you say all right so do i take my chances with the wild savage world out there where people murder without a second thought they rape and kill and eat other people and they do horrible things to women like me who can't defend myself do i want or, or maybe i starve to death or get eaten by a wild animal do i want to take my chances with that or be with this man and what he has he has more than one woman with him so i know if i'm with him i'm gonna still get fed and get protected and be good but i'm gonna take my chances out there with that wild world just because he got more than one woman with him trust me she ain't gonna she ain't gonna be out here good no the, when a woman comes to you in need she ain't gonna come to run her mouth remember she's gonna come from a subjective area because she's like i i need you whatever you say i'm gonna do it just please take me you know it's funny because in this society you know <clears throat> it's hard to get a woman to actually deal with because a lot of them feel like they got so many options you know that <clears throat> they don't need you so it's like you're dealing with the, you know a headache but in that time they're gonna say literally like i want you to just like make me like just take me like they're gonna offer themselves up like take me please I will, let me be called by your name that means what take me you know, I don't take not not that I need you to take me out on a date or sweet talk me. No, I, I just want to give myself to you so that I can be good. It's funny. It's funny how the Lord is going is going to flip that because now you try to talk. to oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, 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 right, 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 right. How many figures you make? What's your Zodiac sign? Let me see your wallet. What car you drive? What sneakers you wearing? You know, let me drive the boat. You know, they got all that shit, you know, like damn near background checks. You know, like if, it's a, if like I said, if it's a job interview, you know. What, what previous girls you been with? Well, who was your previous employer? Why did you leave? You know, how long did you work there? Like, like, bitch, who the fuck? You know, but you got to go through all that now. In that time, they're going to, they, they going to, look, fuck that. I'm here. Like, like, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, the, hey, the Lord, you see the most high, the most high has a sense of humor, you know, because he always gets you. He always gets you and he gets you in the perfect way, you know? So the Lord doesn't hit and miss. <laughs> and that's why he doesn't hit twice. That's a, that's a nice one right there. Lord don't hit a miss. That's why he don't hit twice. <laughs> uh, that's right. They won't have anything to leverage, so they have to take the exactly, exactly. Yep. Man, this is gonna be some beautiful times, man. I, I mean, I'm just thinking of all these things because, you know, the Lord said He's gonna take care of us in Jacob's trouble, but, but it's like it's gonna keep getting better because out of coming out of Jacob's trouble, we're gonna witness the destruction of this place. And then that's the kingdom. The Lord is going to come back and deliver his elect, you know, and give us new bodies, immortality, all these things. So I'm like, you know, you, you think about these things and you get excited because you're like, yeah, well, hold on one second. Lord, you say you're going you're gonna to bless us with all this and, 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 and we just got to learn your word and teach it and just like follow your ways. You know, when you actually think about what the Lord is asking us to do in comparison to what he's going to give us. There's no excuse for anybody to not be doing the will of the Lord. You got to sit down and think about it. Yo, you look at how you're struggling in your life. And the Lord said he's going to turn all that around. All you got to do is serve him. And he's not, he's not asking, you know, a lot of the things people do in the world are much more rigorous and, and demanding than what the Lord is asking for. You know, think about it like, yo, the Lord is pretty much just asking you just live a holy life. <laughs> Bro, just, just, I, I'm going to pay you to live your life. R really, that's what he's saying. Because once you make this truth a part of your life, all you're really doing is just living your life. See, when doing a, doing videos, learning, studying, staying in the spirit, going out there and teaching and living as godly as you can, when you actually be, make that a part of your life, then you realize that the Lord is going to deliver us and bless us for just living. You know, I'm literally just living like this is my normal life routine. And all I'm doing is just living my life 
the right way to the best of my ability and the Lord is going to bless me with all these things, I'd be crazy as hell not to do that. You know, in terms of that, I got mental stability. You don't see any of us bugging out after uh, uh, because of the things going on right now. Look, do you know how many people are actually, like people who have common sense are actually in fear? Like deep down inside, they have nightmares. They have they have dreams they can't explain. They're, they're afraid. They're like, this shit is really getting bad. And yet we're here all happy and, and, and rejoicing and, they, you know, man, what the Lord has given us is not something to be taken lightly at all. Uh, but let's see, I have one more precept over here and then Lord willing, we could close it. This is the book of second Ezra, and not to mention spiritual power. How could I, how could I forget that? You know, <laughs> hey, the most, the most, look, the Lord God is covered, man. The Lord God is covered because what we're doing for the Lord, he values he values that a lot. The Lord, if we be of the Lord's elect, he values us very highly, you know? And so what we're doing is going to be, is gonna, we're going to be so taken care of because of what we're doing for the Lord. And, and to us, it's like, oh, oh, Lord, we're just doing what, you know, the scriptures say we're unprofitable servants. We're just doing what, what we are required to do. But the Lord is like, yeah, I know that. But like I, that, you know, you don't understand how much love the Lord has for his elect. So, whoo. You know, but when it comes to the others, you're going to see a whole nother side, man. Uh, this is second Ezra chapter 15, verse 22. It says, my right hand shall not spare the sinners and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. But yet to the balance, the Lord, the Lord will make sure that his elect don't get touched at all. See, with the same brutal force the Lord is going to use to, to harm and hurt these people, He's going to have such compassion and mercy on his elect to make sure no harm comes to them. See, it's, it's all a balance, you know. Can the scriptures say, um, as great are his, his mercies, so are his judgments. See, so he's going to have great mercy. The Lord is going to have mercy like, like there has never been before for his elect. But he's also going to bring destruction like there has never been before for the rest. Um. Verse 23, it says, the fire is gone forth from his wrath and hath consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners like the straw that is kindled. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. So, so that's why you have to repent because you're not going, you're not going, oh, hold on a second. There you go. Putin decides to ban the exports of, I think it said, uh, hold on a second, to ban the exports of products and, and uh, raw materials until, I think they said December 31st. You, you see, you see, you see how the Lord is, because, because they said if, if Biden, and you see how fast this thing is moving, that they said if Biden did that ban, they going, they going, um, they're going to do something too. And guess what? Let me let me show you something. Now you got you got <laughs> you got Russia, US, like all this tension going back and forth. And guess who's going in the middle? You people. They're putting bans, they're putting bans, they're they're doing this. Niggas don't know how that affects them. Oh, Russia said they're doing this. Hey, F Russia, F Putin. Okay. <laughs> when your ass is hungry and your stomach is growling and you can't go nowhere, you're gonna find out. But you see how quick the Lord is having this happening all around the time of the Passover? You know, and just like that. And we're we're only in the beginning stages of March, the third month, the so-called third month of the year. So, I mean, Brakathai how about Shimiao Shai? Please speed these things up, you know, please intensify it. <laughs> Cause man, we we trying to get out of here, you know. Um Second Ezra chapter 15, verse uh fin continuing on, verse 16. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction for now are the plagues come upon the whole earth and ye shall remain in them for the most high oh for the most high shall not deliver you because ye have sinned against them you hear that the most high shall not deliver you because you have sinned against them and that's why you have to repent because you're not going to escape the lord thinking oh i sinned but i'm gonna get away with my sins no you need to repent and pray that the lord have mercy on you and it's not a joke what we're telling you. It, it, it's funny, right? It's funny because you keep hearing about it, you keep hearing about it, you keep hearing about it. But when it hits, there's no going back. So anybody with common sense 
do the right thing. You know, if you haven't repented, repent. The name of the Most High is Yahweh, and the Son's name is Yahweh Shai. It, there's no other names that you, you can go by. It's Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And that name will be magnified. You just don't want to be on the other side of it. You know? Be on the side that you can you can you can be you can stand in great boldness. Don't be on the other side, man. Because there's it's just not it's gonna be bad. Alright? It's gonna be bad. So anyway, with that, I'm gonna end it here. Um, you know, the water for all the precepts, you know, the water for tuning in. Oh, oh hold on a second. Uh this is uh way I think it's way way H Town 144. Um FedEx is not accepting nor shipping packages from and to Russia, Ukraine, Venezuela, and Afghanistan. Oh, there you go. So now life life is getting life is finna be even harder. <laughs> you know, so hey, bro, tell you how about Shimmy Oshai, man. We just gonna keep watching these things, you know, as they unfold. Because we're in the time of prophecy. You know, so hey, Lord, please speed this, these things up, you know. But with that, I hope you were edified. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. And until next time, shalom.